Welcome to the Palmcast with Steve Willis, your independent, unbiased, and unbought source for Ole Miss Athletics. Hey guys, good morning, good morning, good morning. Ole Miss versus Auburn, 11 a.m. SEC Network, Oxford, Mississippi, Bald Hemingway Stadium. We're going to put a little bow on the Arkansas game and tell you why it's not all doom and gloom. There are positives you can take from that game. But it was, like I will say, the worst quarterback performance in modern Ole Miss history. Probably going back to 1968, Archie Manning versus Tennessee. Now, if you hear me say Archie Manning, you obviously have a different picture of it. So Matt Corral can bounce back from this. There would be no Jackson Massacre in 1969 if there was not an um, Ole Miss-Tennessee game in 1968. That's just the fact. Um, but it, it really was the worst quarterback game in modern Ole Miss history. And if it wasn't for that, they were still in a position to win. The defense had played good enough to win. Um, we're going to go into that a little bit in a second, what they did in the second half to start moving the ball, to start looking at attacking that look. I know a lot of y'all are worried about seeing that in the future. There are avenues in this defense – that are designed to come or this offense is designed to combat that look and we're going to get into that in the second segment because i think the offensive line played pretty well um jonathan mingo had a horror day um it, he's had three games where he's disappeared and one game where he was a star he's got to be more consistent um elijah moore got his 10 plus catches Jerry and Ely went over 100 yards. Y'all gained Arkansas. They struggled on third down and a lot because they got trouble in trouble on the early downs, throwing the ball, especially early on. I think there were probably 12 or 13 possessions in that game. We scored three touchdowns, turned the ball over seven times, so the other two would have been punts. So, there you have it. And, I mean, we're going to break down to how the offense specifically adjusted in the second half. Now, you were having a quarterback that was having a horror day. He was doing the quick saying thing from the replacements. A little Shane Falco advice, like I haven't seen at Ole Miss in my whole life as a fan. It was an unmitigated disaster at the quarterback position. And to be honest, that was everybody's concern. Everybody wanted to, and rooting for a quarterback, they wanted to root for the quarterback with the arm strength because he can throw it downfield. And the other side that was rooting for John Rice Palmley um, was looking more at the intangibles, at the mental aspect of the game. John Rice Palmley would not, quicksand so quickly so now you can see the full package of Matt Corral he's a very high ceiling guy right now he's a very low floor guy and John Rice Plumley is kind of in the middle he's not as high of a ceiling but he's definitely not as low of a floor so this quarterback competition was about the lowness of the floor all right um, you can follow us on Twitter at the Stephen Willis and at Old Positively. Subscribe on YouTube at Old Positively. Hit the bell for notifications. Also, you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash palmcast. Join our Facebook group at Positively Ole Miss. And, of course, you can hit us up on Twitch at Positively Ole Miss. Now, if audio is more your thing, and right now I would imagine by the numbers it is um you can follow us and subscribe on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, soundcloud spotify stitcher tune in radio iheart radio and pandora we are working to get on audible as well so that would be the next step but Please follow, subscribe, one of those avenues, whichever one you're already on, because our stick is we are where you are already, 
and we're never going to ask you to go to a second location and we're never going to extort money from you. Just as pure as that. The, the economy right now, too many middle class people are hurting. This needs to be available to the most possible people. And that includes people that can't pay for the product. You've seen in college football the stadium and attendance going down, and it's right at the same time that paywalls are popping up to information. So you're losing younger fans to things that they can do for free because basically of greed. And it's affecting now the attendance. Once they get to college, they're not going to games. Now, we're probably about 40 years away, but college football is, is like a dying star at the moment. I know you see a lot of stuff and a lot of things, but the young people are the ones that are going to push this forward. So, information is available for free and to the masses, and I hope you tune in and enjoy it. I try to be as, as both... Um, a we, as I like to use, because I was also a letter winner. I had an office in the Manning Center, and I went to school at Ole Miss. So I can say we, because I've earned the right to say we. But as you can hear me say, and that was the worst quarterback performance in modern Ole Miss history, I kind of tell it like it is. I, I'm, I will let you know if there's a problem. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to homer. My goal might be to attract people to the brand, but that just means I'm not going to basically do the silly we are are all miss stuff, cynical things that some people do. A lot of times they aren't fans. So we're trying to build up the brand by telling you how it is. That's There's the secret sauce. We did it right there. But talk, going back to the Arkansas game, and we are going to cover the Arkansas game in the second segment of the show. Uh, but if we go back to the Arkansas game, we can see that adjustments were made. And if it not for the quarterback position, they would have won that game going away. The mistakes were made in, at that position. The offensive line played fine. Jonathan Mingo had a bad day. But anyway, on to segment two. We'll tell you all about it. Palmcast, Stephen Willis, stick around. of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. We spend six hours a day in front of a screen. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. Hey, this is Stephen Willis from Positively All Miss. We're almost done with this break. We'll be back with good information quite soon. The military has been in every generation of my family and so has VA. It wasn't easy for my dad after Vietnam, but VA helped him and my mom get the home they'd always wanted. My grandpa's been coming to VA since World War II. They even helped him lay to rest one of his battle buddies from Normandy. And me, I followed in their footsteps and served with pride. And now that I'm out of the military, the GI Bill's helping me with school. Every generation of my family has served, and VA has served us all. All right, welcome back to the Bombcast. I'm your host, Stephen Willis. Hope everybody has, is having a good day, and thank you for spending a little bit of it with me. 
We're talking about Ole Miss and Arkansas in the house of horrors known as Fayetteville. I think our last win at, um, in that series in Fayetteville was 2008. There's just something with that trip that is messing with people. But we talk about adjustments. And in the second half, you notice that we were running the ball more. But it was more than that. One way that you can attack their drop eight coverage, their hybrid coverage, is to put another tight end on the field. And if you noticed in that second half, Casey Kelly played nearly the whole amount. And his job was basically to block. He was to make their look to handle it. Ole Miss is out there in 12 personnel. You didn't see too many two backs, and you saw Elijah Moore playing out wide. They took you know, Dontario Drum and Braylon Sanders off the field. And that allowed them to start running the ball more. It allowed them to handle the deception and the look. Because, honestly, let's just be real. Matt Corral has not seen that before. That was a hybrid defense. That's the old thing that's like Baylor did last year to combat um, the Big 12. It's the three big safeties, basically three hybrid players, um, and then the corners. But the hybrid players, the, you know, you're playing deep thirds instead of deep halves. So there's less room, and you have five underneath. So the answer to that is to run the ball. Now, they can be successful at Arkansas sometimes by being hyper-aggressive on the run. But if you run the ball, they're going to be hyper-aggressive, and that's going to open up the play pass. Now, you have to sell your fakes. You have to um, use your eyes, which we were not doing. There, Matt Corral was locking onto receivers, and he was not basically looking them off. And so they would just follow his eyes to the path of the throw, intercept it. And the RPOs, this is, this is the part that is most concerning and nobody is talking about. We run an RPO. Um, to where we can hand it off to the running back or the quarterback and throw it on a slant inside to Elijah Moore. It's one of our staple plays. The R was just taken out, and the linebacker was just drifting into that space. And he had one pick six off of that play and dropped another two. As bad as this was... It could have been worse. And that shows that it's not necessarily what Arkansas was doing. It was what we were doing. We were being overly aggressive. You know what I mean? We were being overly aggressive. And just handing the ball off would work. I mean, we rushed for 240 yards in that game, and that was essentially in a half when we got serious about it, after we quit wasting possessions in the first half by trying to force the ball downfield. This is the same thing that Mike Leach is running into, by the way. Everybody's just dropping back, creating small windows for passing teams, and in college, quarterbacks aren't patient enough to deal with it they'll eventually force the ball. We're not dealing with NFL quarterbacks that will patiently dink and dunk all the way down the field. We're dealing with people that have been told for a long period of time that they were going to be the real deal. So of course they can make it. Everybody's talking about Matt Corral's arm strength. Oh, of course he can make it in that small window. So you get a little Brett Favre syndrome on top of everything else just trying to force the ball over and over again, the things that drove Mike Holmgren, his, um head coach in Green Bay, crazy. Now, Brett Favre turned into the, one of the best that ever played the game. But in the beginning, he was known for doing crazy things. Like I said in the first segment, um, Archie Manning threw six interceptions in 1968 versus Tennessee. There would be no Jackson Massacre without that game. There would be no Archie Who 
without that game. That legend that was built was all about the response from that game. Six picks Archie threw, and Archie will tell you about it. So, I'm telling you this so that you don't do the data point, move everything forward thing that media is doing right now. The Oxford Echo Chamber is probably in overdrive. I haven't heard one word of reaction um, out of him, but I, I can, I'm going to assume that A, Arkansas came up with a kryptonite for Superman. Um, B, we're probably not going to win a game. It's the same thing over and over. They just take a data point and they go to the end. It doesn't matter what's before. It's about the latest piece of information. They're such prisoners of the moment. I mean, that was not a good game. But if you look at it, if not for the credit card position, the rest of the team played well enough to win. Had the ball with three minutes left before the last pick six, down a score when you turn the ball over seven times and are stopped inside the one yard line twice. So just, just to put that in perspective, that's eight possessions because the turnover happened inside the, on the play inside the one on the first drive. So that's eight possessions out of the game that were either a turnover or stopped inside the one. Think about that. Eight times. So, if you take those eight out of it, if you, if you say we've done enough to lose this game and those eight, it's like, we'll just move that. That means for the rest of the game, you have four drives where you do what you're supposed to. And you're supposed to win the game. They had one they had the ball with the chance to take the lead with three minutes left. And when we got the ball, we thought it was going to happen. But Matt Corral had made up his mind on that RPO quick slant to Elijah Moore to throw it to him. The linebacker anticipated, went to the zone, just completely vacated the area against the run. His job was either one or the other and he just vacated it and the ball was thrown right to him. So that's kind of what happened in Fayetteville. You can't overcome that level of quarterback quarterback play. You just can't. There's there's not a not a thing in the world that can happen except you lose the game. But the rest of the team kind of played well enough to win the game. The defense, by the way, hats off to the defense. Everybody's been burying them, saying no talent and no scheme and just trying to guess because they look so bad early in the year. The reality is they didn't have a spring practice, they didn't have a fall camp, and they were dealing with 40 hours less video to make personnel decisions. Shocking, it's taking some time to work. On offense, we have super athletes that are versed in running the zone scheme. That's a pretty much a quick transition. But defensively, and the insertion, thanks to Corona, of John Haynes and moving Ryder Anderson from the three technique to the five technique and playing a three down against them. It, it was probably the way to go. It probably fit the personnel. If you ask Momo Saganogo to plug the A-gap, he can, he can get there. He might not be able to get to the sideline, but he can get to the A-gap. So it's all about adjust it, the way they adjusted the run fits and they just played really, really hard on defense. And that needs to be commended, and that needs to be said, and we don't need to lose this. People are talking about the Arkansas game, that people that we just need to throw out the film. No, not on the defensive side of the ball. 
They need to watch that. They are so close to being there. They gave up three yards per rush to Arkansas. And this was an Arkansas team that had Rakeem Boyd. This wasn't a low-strength Arkansas Arkansas team. So three yards per rush. They did well in the passing game. Moving Jalen Jones back out to corner, that helped too. But you will see now that the, the lost time of video has disappeared. It's starting to even out. And players are starting to be put in the right places because you're no longer really guessing. You've got the video. You've got the evidence. And early on, you just were guessing. Oh, this guy looks like this. This guy looks like this. Oh, let's change this a weekend to fall practice to where this is happening. Because you didn't have the film. You didn't have the basis to make the decision. And now coaches who are notorious slow decision makers at Ole Miss, they're starting to catch it. This is the best staff Ole Miss has ever had at, you know, patrolling the sidelines. This, this is going to be fine. It's going to take time. This is a rebuild. If you don't have a stomach for it, take a couple years off. But whether Matt Luke was the coach or Lane Kiffin, this was a rebuild. I mean, just factual. So. All right. I've, I enjoyed breaking that down to you. We're going to move on to um, lines in the third segment of the show. Palmcast, Stephen Willis. You want to answer that, don't you? I bet it's just killing you seeing the soft glow just inches away. Someone wants to tell you something or ask you something. Oh, come on, answer it already. (gasps) Just so we're clear, that wasn't my fault. Next time, ignore your inner voice. Don't text and drive. A message from Florida's trusted choice, independent insurance agents. Hey, this is Stephen Willis. I just want you to stick around a little longer. We're going to get back to the podcast right after these messages. Tonight, nearly 40,000 veterans across the country are homeless. These men and women have pledged to serve our nation, and now we must serve them. Landlords across the country have helped make significant progress in reducing veteran homelessness by making housing available, but there is more that we can do to bring our veterans home. Visit www.va.gov slash homeless to see how you can get involved. And if you are a veteran and you are experiencing homelessness, please call 877-4-AID-VET. Thank you. All right, Palmcast, last segment of the day. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to do a little bit of opening lines through around the conference. Um, I... There's only four games this weekend in the SEC because of bye weeks. Auburn, minus six at Ole Miss. Talk about a two, a te- two and two team that should be one and three. That is the Auburn Tigers. Bo Nix has really struggled on the road. That is something to keep an eye on. Chad Morris not necessarily having this team as the, I don't know, the image of strength at the moment. So Gus Malzahn could be in trouble. Six points for Ole Miss. I don't think um, Matt Corral is going to lay an egg like he did last week. I think this week he's going to rebound. Alabama, minus 17 at Tennessee. Uh, yeah, that, that feels like the tide. That feels like lay them um, because we've seen this year I think something like they had 73 plays against Georgia and 33 went for first downs. That's crazy. Kentucky minus five at Missouri. Elijah Drinkwitz um, getting the lines down, but we could, we sh- that should be interesting to see. They, Missouri right now is a much better offense than Tennessee. I don't know about them defensively. And South Carolina is an underdog at LSU minus seven. That feels like bait. 
And it feels like bait. Obviously, um, LSU has been bad. If, if the quarterback for LSU, Miles Brennan, has the Rona, um, he won't be able to play in that game as well because the rumor is that's the reason he was out and that they were using other medical reasons to to maybe hide it because they could, didn't want to say he had the coronavirus because then South Carolina also would know he was out. I don't know. Um, but either way, Auburn minus six, Alabama minus 17, Kentucky minus five as road favorites, and LSU minus seven as home favorites. So that is your slate this weekend. Ole Miss versus Auburn, 11 a.m., Vault hemingway Stadium, Oxford, Mississippi. We'll get into the weather as it gets a little closer, which I do think the – I do want to say this. I do think the weather affected Matt Corral. Um, It moved the ball seven, eight inches, even whenever he was on um, to the receiver. So it changes the catch radius and the, the dynamics. And all of a sudden, there's passes getting dropped or or windows, you know, it's already tight windows. It doesn't help that the ball has moved the foot, you know, in that direction. So I do think the fact that it was so windy and it was really whipping in Fayetteville this weekend had an effect on the game. Because remember, wind is worse than wet when it comes to passing the football. Wind is worse than wet. So, and let's see, what else do I have? It's not the best podcasting. Um, Also, in this election, just a reminder, everybody that has early voting, you need to go now because we're looking at massive turnout. Just massive turnout. You're dealing with early voting and mail-in voting. It, I mean, we are probably at, I, th- I think we were at 21, 22 million total votes cast at this point. Um, and in 2016, we're at 2 to 3, 3, 3 million. So it's by a factor of 10, more people are voting. Now, the benefit of that is um, there's going to be less lines on election day for people to get in, which will be great because we have, we have a freaking another spike coming and numbers are growing everywhere and it looks like it's going to crest sometime around election day. So that's great. That is terrific. But Ole Miss versus Auburn, SEC Network, 11 a.m. Saturday in Vault hemingway Stadium, Oxford, Mississippi. We get to see the rebound. We get to see adversity put on tape. We get to see it with our own eyes how they react. There is no data point after that because we don't know how they're going to react. Because, honestly, those kids had to relearn how to win games. And they haven't got there yet, obviously. But it's something to keep an eye on. It's all about the bounce back. Can the defense put put another data point on the board positively? We're going to break down Bo Nix and Tank Bigsby and Seth Williams um, later in the week. There are a couple of grown men. Now, before we get started, Auburn is the SEC throwing away a game, and Seth Williams is making a couple of grown man TD receptions from being 0-4 right now. It could be worse. Now, they're 2-2, two two, but eventually that horseshoe is not going to work. It's just not going to happen. But looking at the Auburn game, they are very close to 0-4 right now. And that's something to keep an eye on. Them coming into Vault hemingway Stadium. South Carolina kind of grown manned them a little bit in the second half. They just ran the ball. 
All right. Palmcast Monday in the books. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.